Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan Ki. Welcome to another episode on Let's Hack an X-ray. And today we'll be discussing an interesting topic that is the shoulder dislocation. So let's see what is shoulder dislocation first. A dislocated shoulder is an injury in which the head of the humerus, that is nothing but the bone of the upper arm, that gets pops out of the cup-shaped glenoid cavity of the scapula or the shoulder blade. So that is what happens in the actual shoulder dislocation. So what might be the signs and symptoms of it? So here you can see a diagrammatic representation of the shoulder dislocation, where you can see that normal shoulder joint, the head of the humerus should be coming in close proximity to the glenoid cavity here. Instead, it is displaced from that location and it is dislodged downwards. And this is a typical case of the inferior dislocation of the shoulder joint. And in this case, there will be a deformed or out of place shoulder along with inability to move the joint and there will be intense pain associated with it. And in a short while, there will be swelling or bruising in the shoulder region as well. So these are the signs and symptoms of shoulder dislocation. And let's see the different types of dislocation here. So first of all, the anterior dislocation where you can see on the left side, we have a normal X-ray of the shoulder joint with the head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula here. And you can see they are closely approximated to each other. And this articulation is termed as the shoulder joint. And you can make out the outer margin of the soft tissue as well. It is somewhat convex in shape. And on the other hand, when you take the anterior dislocation, you can see the head of the humerus, which you can see clearly on the left side, has been dislodged from that location anterior to the scapula. And that's why it is called as the anterior dislocation. And if you look closer, you can find out the glenoid cavity margin here. So we have the glenoid cavity margin and you can see the head of the humerus being displaced from its actual location here to anteriorly to the scapula. And this is called as the anterior dislocation. And along with that, you can make out the difference in the soft tissue outline. Here you can see there was a convexity, noticeable convexity here on the left side, while here in the dislocation part, you can see just below the acromion process of scapula, you can see a flattening of the curvature of the deltoid muscle. So that is also a typical sign of shoulder dislocation. So let's see this in a diagrammatic illustration. Here we have a normal shoulder joint where you can see the glenoid cavity and the humerus head in close approximation to each other. And in anterior dislocation, you can see that the head of the humerus being pushed forwards to that of the scapula. And it is overlying the scapula from anterior side. And that is called as the anterior dislocation. So we'll just have a quick recap to the x-ray here. You can see the head of the humerus, which is coming anteriorly to the scapula, and that is called as the anterior dislocation. So the same thing has been demonstrated with an illustrative diagram here. Here you can see the head of the humerus, which is dislodged and coming in front of the scapula. Then the second type is going to be the posterior dislocation of shoulder. And here you have to notice some facts. Here on the left side, normal x-ray, you can see the glenoid cavity and the head of the humerus clearly. And on the other side, you can see there is an increased joint space here. There is an increased joint space. And you are not able to make out the margin of the head of the humerus because it is irregular here, right? That means the head of the humerus has been dislodged backwards just behind the scapula and that is the reason why you can't visualize the head of the humerus because it has been pushed backwards and the posterior dislocation is not a common kind of dislocation because like in like in road traffic accidents and all like when there is a sudden pressure coming over the head of the humerus that can dislodge it dislodge it backwards and that is called as the posterior dislocation of humerus and that is dislocation, posterior dislocation of the shoulder joint. So the same thing with an illustrative demonstration here, you can see the normal shoulder joint 
and here you can see the head of the humerus being pushed behind the scapula and you can see the glenoid cavity here and it has been pushed backwards to that and that is called as the posterior dislocation of shoulder joint and the third type is nothing but the inferior dislocation of shoulder joint in the same way we can see the normal x-ray of the shoulder joint where you can make out the glenoid cavity you can find the head of the humerus and on the right side you can see there is a clear separation or dislodgement of the head of the humerus downwards and that is the reason why it is called as the inferior dislocation and it is one of the common type of dislocation in shoulder joint because inferiorly the joint is only supported by the loose capsular ligament so there is a chance for inferior dislocation in most of the cases so here you can see the glenoid cavity and the head of the humerus being separated and there is a noticeable joint space increase in joint space here and even the outline of the soft tissue has been flattened out below the acromion process so these are the typical signs of an inferior dislocation of shoulder joint so the same thing we can see with the help of an illustrative diagram where the humerus head should have been here in the actual location as you can see in the smaller picture but here what happened is that the shoulder joint has been given a blow or like on a sudden fall or something the head of the humerus has been pushed downwards and that dislodgement of humerus head like constitutes to the inferior dislocation of shoulder joint then what are the causes of shoulder joint dislocation that is easy to remember the falls on outstretched hands or trauma not related to the sports something like a road traffic accident or a sudden blow to your shoulder or sports injuries which commonly happens during high intensity sports like uh, football or like cricket or any kind of such sports can actually cause the shoulder dislocation in case of a emergency like an unexpected fall or anything like that and what are the complications of shoulder dislocation the first thing is injury to the nerves and vessels when the shoulder is getting dislocated the dislocated bone can injure the nerves and vessels related to it other than that it can cause the tearing of muscles ligaments and tendons which are covering the shoulder joint or it can contribute to shoulder instability and repeated dislocations and it is prone to re injuries so once the dislocation happens the chances of recurrence is very high and that is a possible complication of the shoulder dislocation that concludes today's session on the shoulder dislocation and if you have any further radiological anatomy queries do comment below in the comment box and let's learn anatomy in a simple way with proanatomy thank you